Welcome into another Galvanize Who Not Do virtual interview. I am your host, Dorian Kraft, and I am joined by someone who can only be described as a trailblazer, the one and only Beth Mowens. Hello, Dorian. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's so nice to have you. Of course, most of you probably know Beth from her call of the Los Angeles Chargers against the Denver Broncos, the first woman to do that in 30 years. But she's also been with ESPN since 1994, called a variety of games and an episode of The Price is Right, which I find absolutely amazing. And I'm sure that we could talk about that for hours. But I want to just jump in. In our careers, we are always on the go. It's either we're traveling to a game, we're covering a game, we're prepping for a game. And I know for me, it was really hard to find some purpose when things slowed down earlier this year in the spring and the summer, but I took some time to be reflective and I felt like I learned a lot about myself during that time that I may not have realized if I was just go, go, go. And so I'm wondering, how did you take that time of we'll call forced kind of relaxation and what did it teach you about yourself? Well, now, now that I'm a little bit older, Dorian, uh, you know, you, you start to think about things like, well, what's going to be the next chapter? What, what else do you want to try and accomplish while you still can in this business? So you, you spend a little time thinking about those things. Um, I, I think you're also initially very focused on your family and friends and, you know, the fact that you can't really see them. So, you know, like most of America, a lot of Zoom calls to stay in touch with people and and to try and find some, some levity in, in uh, you know, what has been a very difficult situation for everybody. Uh, it was also a chance for me to sort of take a look at, at my schedule and all the stresses involved and all the um, anxiety involved that, that you kind of put aside and don't really think much about because you love your job and you love doing what you're doing and all the travel and all the preparation and then, you know, that first week or two, you, you get these amazing deep sleeps and you're like, God, why am I not waking up at 3.30 in the morning wondering about that coach call that I have later in the day? And so I, I think it's, it's really helped me um, have a greater perspective for uh, how to approach, you know, our jobs when it gets back into, into that grind again, but also a great appreciation for how much I love those moments and what we're all kind of willing to put up with to do the things that, that we love to do with the people that we love to do them with. Now, since you've brought up something that you love, and it's been well documented how much you love this job, when you were eight years old riding around Syracuse on your you know, big wheels with your Mr. Microphone, you've said that you were, <laughs> you've said that you were imitating uh, a lot of you know, Brent Musburger, Vin Scully, Phil Rizzuto. There are a couple others, and I noticed that they are all men. When did you first find your authentic voice as a woman in an industry and in a booth that's been traditionally and continues to be mostly male? Well, one of the positives of kind of knowing what you always wanted to do, and yes, I'm one of those people that uh, knew from a very early age. So I was really able to seek out a lot of good advice from people. Um, most people knew that that's what I wanted to do. So whether it was teachers or family, friends, or once I started working in the business, which was at a very early age, you start to pick up things about, you know, how you have to be yourself, how you sort of have to find your voice, but it still has to be your own. And you're not trying to mimic or imitate other people. Uh, but like most play-by-play -play announcers, you are very aware of how people do things and what sounds good and what doesn't sound as good what you know, words and, and what type of vocabulary fit your style, what types of things, you know, that works really well for Keith Jackson, but may, that may not work uh, you know, real well for me. So uh, probably you know, when I was still in college and I was calling games locally in the Syracuse market, you start to discover, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to have a unique sound. There's nothing I can do about that. So let's make sure that everybody knows that I'm, I'm having a lot of fun, and that I am well prepared and I do know uh, what I'm talking about and I have that base of knowledge and I've done my homework. So those were the things I could control. So make sure I'm on top of everything research wise, but also um, you know, give the viewer the sense that I'm sitting at home with you on the couch, I'm one of your buddies and we're just shooting the breeze. So at this point you're saying your voice is authentically Beth Moens or is there still some influence in there? 
Well, you know, I, I uh, was uh, hit and had my, my nose broken and, and a, a deviated septum when I was playing high school softball. So yeah. that, that altered things a little bit. And, um, you know, you just kind of, there's things you have to go with when it comes to your voice and you just kind of have to take care of yourself as, as best you can. I am one of those as well that's known this is what I've wanted to do since I was nine years old. So we do have that privilege. Um, I want to talk a little bit about one of your other influences that you've mentioned, uh, Phyllis George. Um, you know, growing up on Sunday mornings, I know you got home from church uh, to watch her. Now, she passed away earlier this year, and when that happened, so many women came out of the woodwork, and her colleagues as well, her male colleagues, and just talked about what an icon she was, what an influence she was, especially to the next generation of women like yourself. I know we're certainly years away from that for you, but when you kind of get to the end, <laughs> when you get to the end of your career, when it when you get to that point, what is it that you want your colleagues and the next generation of women to say about you? Well, you know, I think there, you you don't you don't feel any sense of history while you're going through it, and I think that was one of the things that you know, did come about with the passing of Phyllis or, you know, Leslie Visser with, with a high honor um, from the sports Emmys this year had that happened. You know, uh, somebody like a Doris Burke going into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And, and so you're, you're, you're becoming much more aware of the role that a lot of women have played in your career and your development. And Phyllis was certainly one of those. And so I, I, I'd like to hope that you know, the, the big thing with Phyllis and me was it, I could see it so I could believe it. And literally, as I'm watching Phyllis George, I'm asking my mom, hey, you know, that, there's a woman on TV and she's talking about football. Can I do that? And, you know, my mom, great lady that she was, simply said, yes, you can. And so I, I, I hope that maybe that's part of the legacy that I can leave behind is, yes, you can. And not necessarily be, you know, a great play-by-play -play announcer, but yes, you can pursue whatever path it is that you choose. That may be a path that other women haven't taken yet, but at least I hope you, you understand and realize that the doors are open for you to now walk through and, and fight your way through and, and overcome the obstacles necessary to do that. I heard your keynote speech on that in 2018 at the Awesome Conference, and um, you brought up your mom, and you kind of led me right into my next question. You have talked candidly about how she did say, yes, you can do this. Um, unfortunately, in my research, I found out she passed away in 2010. Um, she got to see you accomplish so many things, but the one thing that she wasn't there for was to see you become the first woman to call a nationally televised NFL game. If you can go back to that night, as you're standing in the booth, taking in the magnitude and the history of what had just happened, what is it that you would have liked to say to her? Oh, I, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is she was always my, my biggest fan and uh, such a great support and would have absolutely loved moments like that. Um, you know, when she first got sick, Dorian, I was actually had the opportunity to call a uh, um, MLB preseason game. And my mom's dad was a great baseball player up in Canada. They're actually, my mom was born and raised in Canada. And so I actually, when I did that MLB game, I had a picture in the booth of my mom when she was little with my grandpa. And I, I set it down on the table so they could watch the game as I was calling that. And I was sending her back pictures and things like that as, as much as I could. So she did have a chance to experience some really cool moments in my career and I know the Monday night football ones you know she would have just been been over the moon about and and um, you know afterwards with our whole crew it was a great bunch of, of people that I had a chance to work with and and a, a handful of my old uh, college basketball teammates were in town to keep me grounded and make sure I you know my head didn't get too big and full of myself they remembered me way back when um, and so, you know, post game, you know, you, you raise a toast and, and certainly one of those was to my mom and, and all the support that she had, had given me. I, I've always said my parents raised a point guard. You know, my dad was a basketball coach and they always instilled in me sort of that mentality of, you know, wanting the responsibility, wanting that um, privilege of trying to make everyone else around you and making the team much stronger um, than any single entity. And that's certainly what my mom did with our family. She was our point guard. Well, Beth Moens, thank you for your openness and your honesty today. Um, I have so many more questions for you. We could be here for hours, but I respect your time. And hopefully this is a conversation that we can continue when we finally meet again in person. Anytime, Dorian, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Beth.